Jones healthy, Doug said uh, Sunday night, and he didn't get a snap. Uh, pretty significant investment in him by the front office. Uh, have you kind of written him off, or what's going on? No, he was in a backup role in that. He was uh, he was backing up the nickel in that game, and. Um, you know, we had an injury outside just for a couple plays, and Craig was backing up the outside, and he was backing up the inside. So he started, still had a role out there. Does that mean with Al Orlando Skandrick now, that becomes his role for the time being? Well, um, well, we'll see where we get to Sunday. You guys know I don't like to like be pigeonholed into things or whatever, but he can play that position. Obviously, Malcolm can play that position. Malcolm Layer is a little bit different because of all the different roles he plays. And then, um, you know, sometime we'll trend to get Avante and Cravon back too. So we got a lot of different players that can play in that position. But, you know, Sid started last year at the beginning um, um, in that position and was able to hold that position. So we have confidence that uh, whoever we put in there will be able to accomplish that role. You picked up a couple of defensive tackles in the past day. How's, how long will it take them to be ready to actually play? Well, um, it's going to have to be quick. You had a big shift at linebacker with Nigel's injury and, and Zach Brown being <coughs> out of the building. How do you think Nate and Camu held up? Um, uh, you know, maybe we're bottom line, not a, not good enough to win. And it's not that's just not the linebackers. That's just not the defensive tackles or the corner or the nickel position. That's us as um, a defensive unit. That's us as a team. Um, you know, but that's uh, that's part of what the NFL is, is having injuries, replacing guys. I mean, that's part of the challenge that we love as coaches, and that's part of the opportunity for players. Um, we just weren't good enough, and uh, we got to be better. How do you think uh, Jalen played the first game? Um, I think your your last um, your last thing, a little caveat, answered your question for you. Um, you know, it, it was a that was a tough duty. Now Jalen has worked extremely hard to work out on the side, but he's been working with trainers. He hasn't been able to work with his teammates. He hasn't been able to stand out there and walk through. He's been great in our meetings. He's been great in paying attention to all our stuff, but there's a big difference. I was able to get on the practice field uh, last week and be able to go, but there are going to be some inconsistencies there, and I think uh, I think you can see that in his, um, in his play. I, I will say this. His competitiveness showed, though. And um, I think it showed no better than um, we had to go on the field on that on that short field. And they tried to ice the game right away. I mean, three-score game with 10 minutes to play, still a game. And um, they took a shot at the end zone, and he made a great interception, one of the best interceptions I've seen around here in four years, and gave us, it gave us a chance. Now, it didn't work out for us, but um, – you know, if if we're able to get a score after that and make it a two-score game with about 10 minutes to play, I mean, it's, you know, you're you're talking about a stop and a score and you know everything else. So I do like that, and I think that's a sign, sort of like Malcolm the week before ripping that ball out, um, you know, late in the game. I like that. I don't like how we've gotten to that point. I don't think anybody likes how we've gotten to that point, particularly the way that we've started games. But I do, I do think that will serve us well, that kind of competitiveness and uh, that sort of never say die attitude. And I think Jalen's a great example of that. It was great to have his energy out there. Um, he was great on the sideline and, and competitive. He gave up some plays, but all corners do. I know you don't tell us lineup decisions, but we can all do the math. You have three healthy defensive tackles, two of whom have never played in the NFL before. How do you view that position going forward here? Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's part of the challenge that co comes up every week. I mean, we had we had situations like that last year, also. Um, you know, whether it was you know, I mean, mid middle of the season, we had some challenges there. Um, we had some challenges at the corner position last year, also. Um, we were able to find a formula that worked for us, and um, we were able to make a run. We need to do the same thing this year. You spoke before about the importance of, of confidence. Really, honestly, playing anywhere, but certainly in the corner position. How do you know when, when a cornerback has it or doesn't have it? Um, I don't know. I think it, it's a it's an overtime thing. It's easy to have short term success, or it's easy to label a guy with short term failure. Um, I think it's a it's an overtime thing, and it's something that's that you see develop over time. And I think um, there used to be a sign. Um, one of the teams I coached for a long time ago had a sign on the locker room, 
and it said only through adversity are great men made. And I've always, I've, I've never put that sign up anywhere, but I've always kept that in the back of my mind with different positions, you know, quarterback position or corner position or kicker. You know, I think it really sums those guys up and you need to see some adversity to see how they respond to it because it's not going to be all unicorns and uh, rainbows. The last two, after the last two games, you guys released guys who started for you the day before. As a defensive coordinator, I mean, how do you adjust? I mean, last week, you know, all of a sudden, Zach Brown was your starter. Now he's gone. And now, you know, Orlando Skandrick, and he's gone. Like, you know, what is, how do you adjust to that, you know, each week? Well, we just keep our eyes on what our job is, and it's not my job to do personnel. Um, you know, it's my job to take the guys that we have and try to figure out a way to um, win that game that week. So it really doesn't change our job from from week to week. What about some of the tackling uh, Sunday night? Yeah, poor. Um, and I think one – I mean, you have a combination of things. You have some elusive good running backs. Um, and strong in particular with, um, with Ezekiel Elliott. Um, not all of them were um, due to bad angles, but I think we did see some, some bad open field angles. Um, we have to do a better job of playing team defense. And usually when you're tackling well, you're tackling, um, you're tackling as a team. A lot of times, and you go back, sometimes where we've looked like at our best, we've still missed just as many tackles. It's just that the next guy is is in position and and makes that play. And you know, and I don't want to put it on lineup changes or injuries or anything like that because you know that's that's all part of what we do. But um, team, when you play good team defense, you generally tackle well. And we're still we're still. Um, Find, trying to find our way in that regard right now. Last year, you guys were able to find some success midseason when you simplified things. Yes, the injuries are, are different that you're dealing with right now, but do you think the defense could benefit from maybe simplifying things more? Um, I don't know. Every, every time's a little bit different. I mean, um, you know, against against um, the Jets, we took it, it. It was the opposite of that. It was a lot more complicated, and that worked for us. So. You know, I mean, however we got to play it, we got to figure it out. Um, you know, and that was a formula last year, but you know, last year really doesn't mean anything. Every year is going to be a different set of circumstances, a different set of challenges, a different, um, you know, just a different dynamic. And um, you know, being three and four team, our urgency is certainly up to find that formula. I mean, I mean, you only have 16 games, so there's urgency all the time, but. You know, it feels a lot like where we were last year at four and six. Yeah, it feels a lot like that right now. It's earlier in the season than that, and I don't even know what our record was at this point last year, but it just feels a lot more like that, and our urgency is, you know, you have to do it. And, and it, there's, it's, a, it's a great feeling in the NFL to see guys respond to those kind of challenges and, and find their way through some adversity. I mentioned that little saying that I've seen, there's great reward in that. But it, the, only, the reward only comes from getting the job done, and we haven't got the job done yet. Jim, what was it that, uh, that you were able to capture, I guess, after you know, that four and six marker, you know, through the second half of the season that you need to rediscover, I guess, uh, this time around? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just the, the, um, it's not just a player, it's not just the position, it's not just um, it's not just the defense, and I'll just get philosophical on you. It's it's a group of guys coming together. And, um, you know, we need to, our part of that is coming together as a defense and fitting in with the offense and fitting in with the special teams and guys that have those roles and, um, you know, those things. And um, it's, it's more, I think, more philosophical in nature than, you know, any little one thing. You see, last year, though, you simplified things on the back end and trusted your defensive line. Do you have the defensive line this year? To make the difference there? Well, that's what I said every year is, is different. Um, and what happens this week might be different than what happens next week. It might be different than what happens a month from now. It's a, um, it's a living, you know, a, a, a unit, a position group, um, you know, a team is sort of a living being that, you know, is, is changing all the time over the course of the season. And you have to be able to, um, you know, sort of 
negotiate through a lot of the ups and downs that go along. It is, it is a league that rewards long-term pers perseverance. It isn't a short-term team. I mean, I've been on teams that started really well. I mean, I was on a team that started 5-2 and two and um, I think won one more game the rest of the year, a couple different times. Um, I've been on a team that started 1-4 and four and finished in the AFC Championship game, you know, a, a, a second half away from going to the Super Bowl. So, you know, it, it, what, that, that's one of the great things about this is um, it is a it is a long um, league. I, I say all the time when I sort of speak outside of both or speak both sides of my mouth. Hey, 16 games, every game's urgent, but um, it is a long road. There's a lot of challenges that'll come up with in that, and the team that best deals with that is the team that's going to um, be happy at the end of the year. It's not necessarily you know, the team that has the, the greatest fortune over the course of the year, the team that starts great and finishes great, yeah, that happens. You know, you have some times where you just get on a roll early and you sort of run the table and everything is unicorns and rainbows, but that's not real life. And, um, you know, we need, we're, we're in real life right now. We need to battle. Do you have, uh, what, what do you look for in a skill set uh, at the blitzing spot? And do you have uh, the guys that can, can effectively, uh, effectively blitz? Well, there's a couple different parts of that, um, you know, I think that there's there's different kinds of blitzes. There's run blitzes, which are generally power blitzes, and, and you need thick guys that can go blow up run gaps and get penetration and things like that. And then you have third down blitzes, which are a lot more make you miss blitzes, you know, guys sort of head faking a guy and trying to, to make a guy miss. And just honestly, we're probably more um, built right now for the you know the make you miss blitzes as opposed to sort of the power run blitzes. What kind of uh, difficulties does Josh Allen present uh, with his athleticism, coupled with the big arm, to be able to throw the football down? Yeah, I mean it's not just his athleticism; it's their willingness to run him on the football. You know, a lot gets made of the way Cam Newton played and the way that Lamar Jackson plays in Baltimore. Buffalo's sort of flown under the radar with that with a lot of designed quarterback runs. I mean, stuff that looks like Wildcat, but he's just running quarterback sweep, quarterback power, quarterback counter, quarterback draw, and he's not sliding. You know, he's he's running like a big man and running um, fullback, you know, a lot of stuff that Cam Newton um, would do. Um, they have all the RPOs. They have a, probably a more um, uh, complex, really isn't the, the best word I'm looking for, but, um, um, varied run game than any team we've faced. Some teams, you know, sort of take the approach of, hey, keep it simple, and this is we only do a couple things. These guys do an awful lot. They have powers, they have counters, they have stutters, they have um, zone runs, they have RPOs, they have jet sweeps, they have quarterback runs, um, and he's a big part of those. And then you add into the equation his ability to extend plays and to run for first downs. Um, you know, and I think that, um, you know, you have, we have to be at our very best. It's not just going to be covering guys. We have to play well in the run game, and then we also have to be good in our pass rush game to keep him from escaping or having step-up lanes and have guys in position to keep him from moving the chains. Um, you know, I got, a lot of, I got a lot of respect, and, um, you know, you, you, you look at sometimes you look at film and you look at individual players, and you're like, man, that guy's a great player. He's going to be hard to handle. But, um, you know, just start with the Bills and start with five and one. I mean, how many times do you guys hear that from me? I mean, you guys probably roll your eyes every time I say, hey, we're feeling like we're three and four right now, and how do we play three and four? But, um, you know, they're, they're playing five and one, and uh, that, that gets your full attention, and we're going to have to be at our best uh, on Sunday. You, know, you don't uh, control personnel, but when they make substantive changes in your unit, uh, you have input into that, right? I mean, the, I assume that you didn't think these guys were playing well that have been uh, discarded, and you feel like you need something more, uh, you know, from the people you're bringing in. Well, I mean, you know, the efficiency of the defense and things like that is, is when it's all said and done, is responsibility of head coach and then defense coordinator and then position coaches. So, I mean, that, that really hasn't changed as far as, the other stuff, I mean, I don't think that's a question for me. That's that's a question for for Howie and for uh, for Doug and those guys. Um, you know, I mean, our our job is to to go out and do the best we can every week.
How about third down defense and penalties on third downs? How yeah, do you fix that? yeah, those um, were we, we we have to we have to we have to stop giving people free first downs. I mean, we had I think that was a significant part of that game of a couple defensive holding penalties and hands to the face and things like that that kept drives, you know, going. And you, you see it across the league. I, I, I had the game on in the background last night when I was working, and I kept seeing flags fly in that game. Um, you know, I, it can't take you away from being aggressive in coverage, but, you know, sometimes, you know, you got to be judicious in, you know, the, the times that those, you know, you, you just got to be cognizant of third down, I think, um, you know, and, and have chances to get off the field. Um, when we've been a good third down defense, we've been a good defense. And I think, you know, you you guys, again, I, I beat I beat the same drum up here, but you talk about limiting points. Um, the best way to do that is stop a drive. best way to do that is, is get a third down stop. And um, you can stop drives two ways. One is a third down stop. The other one's a takeaway on first and second down. Um, and that needs to, we, we need to do a better job there to get where we need to do to help our team win and to be the defense that we want to be. Okay. All right, guys. Okay. You said last week and the past weeks that deep ball was close. Do you still feel that way? <laughs> yeah, we were close again, right? And uh, obviously, we had to keep working on it. Um, again, we had another, another shot at it, and uh, we, we weren't able to connect. And so we'll go back to practice again this week, and we're going to keep designing the plays and um, keep working on it. What did you see from uh, Nelson on that deep ball that missed it? <coughs> I thought he uh, gave tremendous effort, played with great speed down the field. I thought he located the ball uh, maybe a little bit later in the down um, than we would like, and it made it a difficult, uh, you know, uh, 
because he located it late, he, he wasn't able to, to catch up to it. Had he located it sooner, um, maybe it would have taken a little bit different course and, and would have been there. Well, that third and four, um, I do want to say this, though. I mean, uh, in terms of Nelson's effort in our games uh, and the things that he does for this team, um, I don't think that his effort should ever ever be questioned. And, and what he's poured in, his heart and soul into this team over the last five years and um, done everything that he's ever been asked to do. And because we didn't connect on that one, I don't think is a reflection on, on what he's done for our team. Is there anything Carson could have done differently on that, on that throw? I, I mean, I think Carson made a good play on it. You know, he's under some duress there in the pocket. And, uh, you know, he laid the ball out there across the field to, to give Nelson a chance to, um, you know, track the ball. And we just, we just picked it up late. I mean, um, again, uh, we got to go back and, and we got to continue to work on these things in practice and, until we hit them in the game. We got to start hitting them in the game. Nelson was talking about, uh, seemed to be suggesting uh, kind of like the fine line between uh, being a technician as a wide receiver and, and uh, more improvisational. Do you, do you feel like that's, uh, does that speak to kind of that, that play? Perhaps. I mean, I think there's an artistry certainly to playing the position. Um, but you need to be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. So there's, you know, the coordination of it. Um, in terms of you know being you know where the quarterback anticipates you being, and um, we we were just we were just a little bit off on that one. On that third and four, was uh, up the run to Miles, was that blocked correctly? Was the hole where you guys thought it would be and all that stuff? Yes. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was. It was blocked. Uh, it was blocked correctly. Yes. What are, what are Miles' issues? We've seen this before now. Of course, this season he's young. We understand that. But, but what's holding him back from hitting those holes? Uh. I think he was in the right hole, Jeff. I think um, he may have gotten there a, a click late, but I think that he was in in the right hole. And I think uh, you know he's done a lot of really good things for us over the first seven weeks, and uh, you know we're going to continue to utilize him. Mike uh, Andre kind of got thrown into the deep end of the pool in Minnesota last week. He had the first team reps. How do yeah. you think he improved? How do you think he held up? Well, I think he did uh, a really good job, commendable job. Uh, under difficult circumstances, playing against uh, two really good rushers or three really good rushers, the guys that he matched up with down there in Dallas uh, and acquitted himself very nicely. And I think, uh, you know, his confidence ought to grow as a result of his performance. You guys were run heavy early. Did his presence have anything to do with that? Did you want to take some heat off him by running the ball more often? No, I think, you know, we, we always want to try to establish uh, the line of scrimmage and the physicality about the game. And, um, you know, I thought we had some good runs in there, but it, it wasn't anything in specifically to do with Andre. Mike, how do you feel about check downs, whether or not Carson is doing that, and if they're even there and available to him at times? Well, we, we want to utilize all available receivers. And um, you know, when the play is designed, it's designed to go through the progression. And then, you know, we trust certainly Carson's uh, – uh, abilities to get through the progressions and, and to find, you know, whether it's it's number one or it's or it's the fifth guy in the progression, to be able to work through the progression and, and get the ball to the open guy. Zach Ertz has been targeted. I'm sorry. It seems like every week we ask you about, you know, the slow starts and everything. And obviously this week you guys, this past week you guys were down 14 nothing six right. minutes into the game. We dug ourselves a hole there, didn't we? And, and yep. like how frustrating does it have to be for you? And then like how much does that cause you to vary from the game plan? I mean, knowing that you're already down two touchdowns, like not even halfway through the right. Well, we, we certainly can't turn the ball over in back-to-back -back plays. Um, so we, you know, we need to do a better job of taking care of the football, um, and and you know that that will that will help. You know, in this in this you know last game as you, as you analyze that. So we got to do that better, and uh, we're determined to do that. Nobody's happy with the results that we got. Um, we were able to go down and score. Um, what was it? Our, our third drive. Uh, of the game, put a really good drive together. Great, great throw uh, by Carson, and a uh, really good play by by Dallas down there in the end zone for for the long touchdown throw. So, um, but we 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 gotta we gotta start quicker than that. We we can't have penalties or miss assignments or turn the ball over, you know, on our first two drives of the game. Hey Mike, Zach, I'm sorry, Zach Ertz has been targeted 19 fewer times through seven games than he was last season. Why is that? Uh, I think Zach's in the top five or something for receptions in the league for tight ends. So um, he's he's a very important part of what we want to get done on offense. Uh, we got a lot of confidence in Zach. He's a tremendous player and uh, will continue to be a playmaker for us. What about the, uh, what about the early early though? He uh, three straight first quarters where he hasn't gotten a target. And he didn't get a yeah, target he, I mean he he was either one or two in the progression on. Um, 
I don't know how many, but certainly our first seven uh, passes. Um, so, and, and like we've talked about, sometimes the ball goes there and sometimes it doesn't. And it's for a variety of reasons uh, in, in, each, in each case. But uh, it's not for lack of, of trying to get Zach. I mean, we all know that, um, you know, he's an important part of what we do. He's one of the reasons why we win. And um, we're going to continue to try to design plays to get him the ball. Three straight games now without a catch for Mac. Um, are you guys getting enough from him right now? What was the end of it? From him? Uh, yeah, I mean, Zach's a, or Mac is another guy that uh, has just done everything that we've asked him to do. The ball hasn't found him. Um, I actually thought uh, in this past game that, um, you know, from a passing game perspective, you look at the routes that he ran and put on tape, uh, he was, he was uh, improved uh, week over week. Uh, from the week before, I think he's put a lot into practice and, and trying to refine his technique, and he's done a good job. And, um, you know, I think you'll continue to see, uh, you know, both both those guys, J.J. and Mack, in the game. Uh, Andrew was saying after the game that uh, he had some things to work on. Is one of them, you know, film work where he has to study opponents more and their, their pass rush moves? I think uh, he and Coach Stalin, um do a great job of studying the opponent, putting a game plan together for who he's playing. Um, I don't know. You'd have to ask Andre specifically that question. I, I don't. I don't know that I have an answer for you, but I think we all would admit that there's things that we need to get better at. Um, and we practiced to, to go down there and, and play great. We prepared to uh, to go down there and play great, and we fell well short. And we're determined to get it fixed. How uh, pass protection in general, uh, obviously you're in a stretch where you're facing some really good fronts. Where do you feel like you guys are pass protection-wise? Yeah, I think that we've done, uh, you know, we're, we're, like you said, we're facing some good people up front. I think that we've done a... A good job of protecting the quarterback. If the goal is to, um, you know, give up no sacks every week, then then you know we're obviously falling a little bit short of that. But um, there's some things uh, from a pass uh, pr protection standpoint that we could clean up, and then um, you know just individual techniques. You know, guys, just making sure that they're they're focused on those things each each and every snap. How would you evaluate Carson's performance this season? For the season. Uh, I think Carson's played well. I think he's certainly uh, made a lot of really good plays. And then there's there's been times where there's plays that I know that he'd like to have back, but that isn't isolated uh, just on Carson. Um, that That's across the board. And uh, I think that we could all say that about our performance to this point. And um, so that's why we're going back out there tomorrow. We know we got a great opponent uh, in Buffalo, you know, another another really good challenge and, uh, and, a, and a stout defense. So we got to get back at it. It's not business as usual. We got to we got to get back out there and we got to get to work and we got to get it fixed. The of course of uh, evaluating a quarterback is probably a little bit different inside than from the outside perspective. What are what are some of the things that you have kind of that you kind of key on for what you're looking for out of the quarterback and, and how Wentz has kind of stacked up to that? Could you ask that question again? Sure. Uh, so what are the I guess, points of emphasis or importance for you when you're evaluating a quarterback and how is Carson stacking up to that? Yeah, I th like, I, like I just said, um, I think Carson's played really well. We've had some games where, uh, obviously, offensively, we've played better than others, and um, he's made a lot of really good plays. And then there's, there's some plays that um, when we come back in here on, on Mondays and we, and we look at them, how could we have done this better or what, what could we have done differently here? Um, and he certainly is, is not immune to those types of plays, just like the, you know, the other 10 guys in the huddle. And um, you know, when, when things aren't going well, there's, there's a few more corrections to make. And, and it's not just Carson, it's, it's all of us. What are, some of the corrections that he, what are some of the corrections that he does have to make? I mean, I don't know if I could give you uh, anything specifically or, or generally speaking. but. Yeah, so one of the things yeah. that he does well is he extends plays. Yeah. And he, but, but does that, like to the flip side of that coin, does he sometimes hold the ball too, is he holding the ball too long in certain circumstances? I mean, I think you could always say, if, if a play doesn't work out, you could probably always make the counter argument. And um, yeah, I mean, sure. There's plays that he, you know, he makes a hero play, he scrambles out of there and, and makes, makes a, a play that you just scratch your head and you look at the, the guy next to you and say, holy cow, what a play. And then, uh, you know, sometimes there's, there's other times you just, I think it's part of uh, playing the position is uh, knowing when to hold them and knowing when to fold them. And then we've, uh, you know, we've, we've had a lot of success with Carson back there, um, extending plays and, and making plays for us. 
Mike, you Buffalo a little bit, that defense, what, what have you seen from them? Uh, um, I, I think this is a uh, very uh, well-schooled defense, um, one that is very opportunistic. Uh, they've created turnovers and, and short fields for their offense, put their offense in a really good position. They play really sound football, play well together, uh, great gap integrity. Uh, they do a good job of, uh, of getting on the edge and creating pressure up front. Uh, and they have, they have good players, and, and they, it looks like they play really well together. Um, they all fit the scheme and the system really well. And, uh, and so, you know, collectively, they're playing really good defense right now. Thanks, everyone. Yep, thank you.